What's up everybody, it's your boy Wes Grant, you're watching Suburban Nerd, this is the channel where I give my nerd views on today's nerd news, and today, I'm sorry, like, it's, I haven't put up a video in a week or in, in this, this whole week, so I'm gonna take all the news from this week and squeeze it into one video, and hopefully you guys will enjoy. We're gonna be talking about all these things like the Halloween movie breaking records, a lot of some DC news, a lot of some Marvel news, a little bit of uh, spooky news sprinkled in all the way at the end. So the first thing we're going to talk about is Halloween. Halloween, if you guys don't know, it's out and it's set to break records. It is the the, the what they say that it was scaling to make was at first it was probably like 50 to 65 million dollars. Then the whole like people are estimating that it might be going from 65 to 80 million dollars and then even more it might be going from 80 and some people are saying maybe 100 which I don't know if it is but it's gonna be a tall order if it does it's gonna be the highest it's gonna be the, the break the highest record of any October movie ever even Venom Venom that shocked everyone with his 80 million dollars 80.3 million dollars this weekend this past weekend or two weekends ago and because if you guys don't know October is not a month for making money because in like if you're going down as far as the ranking from the worst to the best one which is Venom the worst is a, what Jackass 3D came out way back when but it came in it was at 50.3 million dollars and then we have Paranormal uh, Paranormal Activity 3 that came in at 52.5 million dollars then the next one after that was Martian which was a couple years ago came in at 54.3 million dollars and then the one before that was the one after that one was Gravity coming in at 50, you know, with Sandra Bullock, George Clooney stuck in space, coming in at uh, 55.7 million dollars. And then out of nowhere, Venom comes in at 80.3 and just squashes all that. And mind you, before Venom, there was only like a five million dollar difference between the the, the, the best to the, 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 to, to the, you know, fifth place or whatever. So this Venom movie, Changing it game, and then now you got the Halloween, and I'm telling you right now, I think, I think the Halloween movie may do it. Why? Because it's get set precedent. These scary movies are now like before they used to be crappy. They they used to be crappy scary movies coming out, and no one cared about them. But now scary movies are going good. Like I wouldn't call Get Out a scary movie. It's more like a thriller, kind of horror, but. That got people. Then you got Lights Out. Then you got Don't Breathe. Then you got It. That, that, that just blew everybody away. It just came out of nowhere. No one's touching It. It's like at 120 something million dollars or 150 something million dollars opening weekend. I'm sorry. This this Halloween movie is not touching it. I'm sorry. I don't believe it's going to touch that. If it does, I'll be wrong. But I'm just saying, I don't think it's going to get there. But it might get to that 100 million dollars. Because a lot of people, I got my ticket set for tomorrow to see it. So I'm bef definitely going to be adding to that pot of gold that they're going to be, you know, dancing in and swimming in come Monday. But that's what I'm thinking. That's what they're saying. And that's what might happen. We're going to the next topic. is a CW crossover. If you guys don't know, every year they do a CW crossover with the superheroes. Which is, you know, Flash, Supergirl, Arrow, and Legends of Tomorrow. This time, Legends of Tomorrow is getting left out. I believe they got left out of the last one. Did they? I think they did get left out of the last one. But is Legends of Tomorrow aren't going to be in this crossover. It's going to be Supergirl, Flash, and Arrow. But they're going to be adding in Superman. And also going to be getting Batwoman. And not Batgirl, Batwoman, uh... Cassandra Cain, played by the lovely, beautiful Ruby Rose. And there might be a spinoff and have her own series. In fact, there's talks that there might be a spinoff and have a Superman series. But I don't know how much that's going to work because as of right now, if you look at their slate, they have all these superheroes. You've got Flash, you got Arrow, you got Legends of Tomorrow, you got Black Lightning, you got Supergirl. And if you add Superman... It, I don't think it meshes because Superman is pretty much like Supergirl. It's pretty much the same powers, same background, and you've already made ba Superman Supergirl's bitch. Like, you literally had them fight, and then you could have been like, oh, no, under my control. But then you have him text her, no, Supergirl, you beat me swear, fair and square, you were the stronger one, I'm a bitch, and uh, you are the better superhero. And like, no, what, what, what are you doing, man? What, CW, why did you just make this dude just straight up just, like, you could have let it go. Let it go and been like, he was under control, you know, you couldn't, 
but now you've made him weaker than her. So it's going to be like, why would we watch a show of a man who is weaker than the female in this universe? I, I know, you know, it's like female empowerment. Yes. But it's like Superman is just known for like in the comics. Yes. They say Kara has potential to be stronger than Superman. Yes. They say that. But we all know Superman's number one. He is number one in the DC universe. There's no above. It's just Superman. So them making him her chump, it kind of kills it for me as far as watching the show. I used to watch all the Superman shows. I've watched Lois and Clark. I drudged through that goddamn Smallville for 10 effing seasons for no goddamn payoff at all. None. I And I, I would watch it just to see where it goes, but I don't think we need a Superman series and this it's, it might be even a rumor because it, it came out of nowhere from a fandom wire which is a website no one knows so this this might just be a rumor most likely it's a rumor but hey i'm just giving you guys all the information out there and if you guys want to see the crossover images because the best one is they got uh they had uh barry allen or oliver queen dressed as flash and then you had barry allen dressed as arrow and then uh on um i forget what's his name but uh, the one that plays Oliver Queen, he posted and it said, Hey, like, hello, I'm Barry Allen, and I'm the fastest man alive with him inside the costume. Which I think is pretty cool. I'll try to see if I can put a link to that image down below. Uh, but that looks fun. And I'll tell you guys more when it gets close to when that. Because I'm not sure. That's usually like mid-season when they have those crossovers. So probably close to the end, like December, December-ish is when we're probably going to see that. Next we're going to be talking about the oh we're going to be talking about iron fist iron fist is getting dusted yes dusted well as far as being actual show because he is getting canceled if you guys haven't heard you probably, like i'm i'm the last one to probably tell you guys but yes iron fist is getting canceled his show is no longer going to be on netflix and uh, i don't know what to tell you but other than what they pro, uh, Marvel themselves put out a statement. Their statement says, Marvel's Iron Fist will not return for a third season on Netflix. Everyone at Marvel Television and Netflix is proud of the series and grateful for all the hard work from our incredible cast, crew, and the showrunners. We're thankful to the fans who have watched these two seasons and for the partnership we've shared on this series. While the series on Netflix has ended, their Myrtle Iron Fist will live on. Now, there's a couple things you can may, maybe take away from this. There's three things that it might be saying, right? I'm going to tell you guys right now. First thing is, it's probably going to go to the Disney streaming service. Because if you guys don't know, Disney's making their streaming service. And a lot of people, like I thought myself that they were going to be uh, probably taking these Netflix shows. But I'm hearing that it's sort of the same deal that uh, Sony has with Spider-Man. As far as, as long as they keep pumping out like stuff, they get to keep it. So as far as Netflix, the shows that are on Netflix, as far as Marvel, they get to keep them as long as they can keep running it. So Iron Fist, that's gone or whatever. But you're still going to have Daredevil, still going to have Jessica Jones, still going to have Luke Cage, even though the second season, second season, I'm not going to say it was bad. It wasn't bad. Um, uh, Bushmaster, I liked them. They could let more develop, but it, it could have used a little bit more work. And then the way they ended it, I wasn't, I didn't like the way they ended it, but... The number two is that they, um, the reason why they might be getting rid of their, um, you know, Iron Fist is nobody watched season two because honestly, season one was so bad. I was a little iffy about watching season two. And the only reason I did was the talks about it was like, hey, it's not that bad. So I ended up watching it and it wasn't that bad. In fact, I, I think I gave it a pretty good review if you want to check right there. But, um, what was it right there? No. Anyways. So I checked it out, and uh, it's it's pretty good, but there's not a lot of people watched it. So they was like, okay, maybe we'll see what it is and what what's gonna go down. But n n a lot of people disliked the first season so much that they just didn't even bother even returning for the second season. And the the numbers must have been down so low that it just didn't seem reasonable for them. To, even if they got pretty good praise as far as the series, then it's like, why are we doing this if no one's going to watch this? And that might be why it getting canceled. And then number three reason is maybe they're going to do the Heroes for Hire. So maybe there won't be Iron Fist, but there won't be a Luke Cage on his own either. And they might 
fuse them together and have the Heroes for Hire, because we've all been waiting to see this. Ever since they had Luke Cage and Iron Fist, we've all been waiting to see. They had a little bit of cameo of Iron Fist going with Luke Cage in Season 2 of Luke Cage. But we want to see the full-fledged thing. We want to see Heroes for Hire, Luke Cage, Iron Fist. And that might happen. That might be what happens on it. So maybe he'll still be on Netflix and do Heroes for Hire. Or there might be Luke Cage... To the, uh, to the stream service and then have Heroes for Hires with Iron Fist. Don't know, but that's just the possibilities. And I'm telling you guys, just to give you guys information as far as what could happen. So, that's it as far as that thing for, you know, Iron Fist. Going on to the next topic, we've got the um, Spider-Man Homecoming. No, Spider-Man is coming home, is what, I, is what I say. Because Homecoming is finished. Uh, they've finished uh, post-production as far as him shooting. And now they're going. In, they're actually going into post production as far as digital. I think uh, he's done shooting all his parts. So all, all they have to do is pretty much touch it up, add the special effects and all that. And he posted on his Instagram, uh, "That's a wrap." Hashtag Far From Home. And if he also posted some images of him standing next to Zendaya, the lovely Zendaya, who is MJ. They didn't say she was Mary Jane. They said she was. Her initials was MJ in the homecoming. If you guys watch it, so I don't know if they're just trying to mess around with us. Or not because she, I mean, she's beautiful. If she, if they made her MJ, no problem. Nothing says that MJ has to be white. But I need her to have red hair. I'm sorry. I want her to have red hair. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> as far as that, I'm, I'll be happy. I'm, I'm happy with Zendaya, but I'll be even happier if she has the red hair. You know what I'm just saying? Just like, we, look, the fans will, little fans that just won't hurt anybody. So just giving you a little tip and advice. No, you're not going to listen to me because I'm nobody on this YouTube thing. I barely have 200 followers. But I'm just saying, from a fan's point of view, this would be gratefully appreciated. All right, next we're going to uh, No More Batfleck or Man of Steel. Now, going on to that, we've got Ben Affleck and um, Henry Cavill being cut from the DCU. What is that? Yeah. in the st they, they literally posted in this thing. I think Variety broke this. And they say... Following the box office disappointment of Justice League, yeah, Justice League, Warner Brothers has been reevaluating its approach to making movies based on DC comic characters. The studio is not moving forward with Batman and Superman movies featuring Ben Affleck and Henry Cavill, respectively. Now, sounds like they just got fired. Yes, and it's been a long, it's not even a long time coming, like, Everyone knew Ben Affleck did not want to be Batman anymore after he was supposed to be the director of the new Batman film, after he was writing the script for the new Batman film, and all of a sudden, that got taken away from him. Then he was executive producer of DC, that got taken away from him. And then all of a sudden, like, no, he got he got thrown to the trash. I'm sorry. They, and then they had someone else rewrite it, rewrite it, rewrite it, until and now they got Matt Reeves coming in, who's a great director, but he's writing his own thing. And the whole storyline that Ben Affleck had, that was sounded pretty good. That's why he even had some uh, footage of Deathstroke played by um, Joe Manganiello. And he, that's that's not even anything anymore. So no one knows what's happening with Batman. Man is still, they could have, they should have did a Man is Still too, But that's never happening because they don't feel he can fit in there anymore. Which I don't understand. But Superman can't fit in the DC Universe? That's stupid. But they're moving forward to all these females. I'm all down for female empowerment. Yes, I am. But it seems like they're just doubling down on that. You got Birds of Prey. You got Supergirl. You got Batgirl. You got all these female-driven series or movies that are coming out. Like, what? You got the Harley Quinn and Joker, which is most probably going to be focused by Harley Quinn. You got a Harley Quinn to animated TV series. Like, dog, like... We want the we want our Justice League. We want all the superheroes, the ones that you tease us with. Sure, we are getting an Aquaman that looks awesome. That's coming out in December twenty first with um, my boy. What's his uh, What's his name? I'm thinking drawing a blank right now. Uh, what's it called, bro? I can't remember his name. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm drawing a blank right now. But yeah, the one the playing playing Aquaman that's coming out, and I'm like, okay, I'm looking forward to that, but. You know, like, you've got Shazam, which is completely different. And then you got Wonder Woman, uh, 84, 1984, which I'm pretty sure is going to be good. Patty Jenkins knocked it out of the park with the first one. But 
after that, what's going to happen? It's all just a slate of female movies. And no Batman. No, They ha they were planning on a, a Cyborg. That's not happening. They were planning on a Green Lantern Corps. That's not happening. All we know is these female ones. What's, if it's good and it's good directing, I'm all for it. Because they knocked out a part Wonder Woman. They might be able to do it with this one. But I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, but we'll see how that works out. DC, I, I, I don't know. I'm just going to... Whatever you guys do, hopefully it's good. Next, we're going to be talking about Chris Evans. If you guys don't know, there's controversy last week where Chris Evans was pretty much saying that, um, or people took this as him saying that he's going to be out of MCU. And he wrote, officially wrapped on Avengers 4, it was an emotional day to say the least. Playing this role for over at least, uh, for, for over, role over the last eight years has been an honor. To everyone in the front of the camera, behind the camera, and the audience... Thank you for the memories. Eternally grateful. Now, people took that as him saying, like, all right, bombards, I'm out of this, done, finito. But he did not. And, in fact, he wrote a, um, a rebuttal in a way. He wrote a statement basically trying to clear up things a little bit more, but sort of kind of vague. But it was like, you feel a lot more emotion, you feel a lot more emotions than I think even I thought I'd feel. feel. And I felt it was appropriate to share the gratitude. I know it had a ripple effect, but I am neither confirming or denying anything. As far as saying, hey, I didn't, I, I just wrote something, you know, because it was finally over and I'd been shooting for so long. I didn't think anyone was going to take it as me saying I'm quitting. I didn't, I'm not quitting. I'm not saying I'm not going to be out of MCU, but I'm not saying I'm going to be out of the MCU, which it's just good to say because we don't know. He he doesn't know what they have planned because after, after a while... He said, said that, yo, Hugh Jackman did Wolverine for like 47 years. I can do it. I'd love to do it for even longer. Not long, but I'd love to do it for a long period of time as well. So he's down to play Captain America, but it's all about what they have plans for him. If they want to have to kill him off, they kill him off. If they want him retired so someone else, so new heroes take over, so that's what will happen. But he doesn't know, so he's not going to say he's going to be out, not going to say he's going to be in. He can't say because he's not in charge. He has no idea what's planned for Captain America. He just plays a role. So we'll see how that works. But we're just clearing that up. He's not leaving for good. Well, he doesn't know that. We don't know anything. Okay. And then um, next thing we got Guardians of the Galaxy. It has a title, but it's called Hot Christmas, which is a funny title because basically it's these titles of these movies whenever they're being made that they have these uh, semi titles that aren't don't really mean anything, you know, like they've had ones for Blue Bear, Blue Blue Diamond for uh, for like a Star Wars movie, a Force Awakens when I think when it first being made before it was called Force Awakens. Like they have all these names so it doesn't really mean anything. But it's getting pushed back because they're not gonna be start production until like two thousand twenty. So the movie probably come out two thousand twenty one if that because they have to go over a script and do all this thing. And I mean hey, that's what happens when you get rid of the director of the first two and then you're still trying to figure out, and then, you know, you've got Dave Batista and Jason Momoa. Sorry, I had to bring it back. Jason Momoa, Aquaman. But like I said, Dave Batista, he, uh, he's, you know, he wants out of this. So we got to figure out who you're going to do, if you're going to write him out, if you're going to have someone just play him. And, you know, because it's all prosthetics and makeup, so you could have someone just kind of look like him and just act like, you know, if you change someone. But, hey, we'll see how they do with that. But that's going to be done. Uh, one of the last things I want to talk to you about is this movie trailer that holy crap check right here it's called the curse of la ya 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 sorry la ya ora ya la ayora ayora ya ya ora la yorora yora so i saw so messed up saying it but it's a curse it's about the spanish folklore about this lady who killed her kids and then like sees a spirit going around and then she possesses other people and has them kill their kids and then though i'm telling you this trailer looks spooky and creepy and looks just as scary as the first it trailer when he showed up out of nowhere inside that sewer i think it's gonna be awesome and it has it has a feel of lights out and like it i'm sorry it feels like it and lights out together and lights out was freaking awesome as far as with the lights out, and you saw her when the lights are on. You, like they sorted this in the scene with the kids, and I'm like, "Yo, this kid, he's doing a smart thing." Cause normally you see these kids, that if you see the window winding down, they just look and just watch it. This kid's like, mm, he fights it. Another window starts opening, mm, he fights that. And then the doors start locking, he's locking them. He's doing everything to sneak, keep this thing out of the car, which is what a kid should do. And I'm so happy that finally they're doing that. Being smart, thank God. 
And hopefully they don't just make everyone else stupid. Because I don't, I hate when people are stupid in these horror flicks just for the sake of progressing the story. But yeah, this trailer looks awesome. Definitely looking forward to it. La Yorora. Uh, the Curse of La Yorora. And I'm gonna, I'm, I just, I can't wait. Check that shit out. I got the trailer, like I said, check it out. And then the last thing is, Daredevil Season 3 comes out, came out yesterday. Everyone's gotta watch it. So, I'm down. I know this video's longer than I wanted it to be. 20 minutes, damn. Um, but I'm squeezing in a whole week's worth of information. Hopefully some people watch this video because I'm putting a lot of effort into this. And I'm just trying to squeeze in because I've been watching shows. I've been trying to do reviews of these shows. But there's so many damn CW shows that keep popping them out like rabbits. And I can't keep up. So, but I'm trying to. I'm just trying to. You know what I'm saying? But um, thank you for watching the show. Remember to put those notifications on. Like this video if you like this video. Hopefully you like this video. And then um, comment down below if, if, on any of the topics that I talked about if you guys are interested in anything because I love talking back and forth. Anyone comment me, I comment to them right away, right back. So that's pretty much it. So remember to subscribe. Check out my last Daily Nerd News, which was probably last week. Check out my uh, net, my um, playlist of Daily Nerd News. Remember, I'm Wes Grant. You've been watching Sub Urban Nerd, and you've just been Nerdified. Catch you guys on the next Daily News.